Wish TV is proud to be Indiana's education station. Here's a troubling scenario that may be all too real. The water that your children and their friends drink, or the paint on your walls, or the neighborhood where you live could be making it harder for them to learn to read. That's the focus of a groundbreaking new study from a group here in Indianapolis. Dr. Addy Angelov leads the Paramount Health Data Project and is kind enough to join us today. Thanks for being with us. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. Well, you bet, especially when it's a topic like this. Your group started in Indianapolis. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it looks at the links between health and performance in the classroom. How did it start and, and when did it start sort of doing the work that's led you to this? Yeah, so we started about 10 years ago doing work looking specifically at some of the correlations mm -hmm. we've seen between health and education and how to support kids in a classroom. And that was really, you know, it actually started with a lead issue about 10 years ago in a school on the east side. So, you know, really figuring out how do we provide academic supports in the classroom when we know that there are health issues in that community. I know we would like to think, oh, well, this is decades ago. You know, lead hasn't been a big problem, but then we see what happened in Flint, and we right. even look at your own studies and say, well, no, it very much still is. As much as you can, tell us the current state of it. How, how big a crisis is it still in America? Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing lead pop up as an issue all over the place, whether you're looking at Chicago or, you know, I think it started with Flint, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what most people think about. But even if you see what's going on here in the city of Indianapolis, um, you know, we're changing out pipes. We know that this is a citywide effort. We've got federal support to be doing that work. And the reality is lead has a major impact it's not just happening in Gary in Chicago it's happening right here in Indianapolis and we were really excited that you know we have a five-year longitudinal study that shows the direct impact on kids academic achievement and their literacy rates really startling things in it too as well when you when you dig into the numbers you find for instance that the, half of the schools in the city may have lead issues beyond what's considered acceptable? Yeah, I mean, I think the reality is we moved the lead threshold back earlier this year. So even before that, uh, the state of Indiana did a 2019 study that showed the hot pockets where we saw lead mm -hmm. as an issue. Um, and then you also saw the NAACP of Indianapolis, Gary Holland's group, do amazing work about the schools in Indianapolis. And what we see, if you overlay that I read map with right. the red spots that the IDOE has with that 2019 because the kids in kindergarten in 2019 are now our third graders right? right and you see those red hot spots matching the lead hot spots so those two maps are really giving us a lot of information and now we have over 50,000 variable points here from Indianapolis showing us that if kids are exposed to lead their academic achievement is going to tank so if they're in something of quicksand right now as the yeah. problems not necessarily getting any better what are you encouraging parents and schools and right now state lawmakers to do? Yeah, we're really encouraged that we see a couple of bills going through the state house right now really supporting this. So uh, huge kudos to Representative Jackson who really pushed to get some preschool legislation last year. She's pushing harder to make sure that we see support, fiscal support, mm -hmm. um, you know, because right now we're working from federal grants. So getting state grants that won't go away, super important. Then also making sure that the Indiana Department of Health and the Indiana Department Department of Education are talking to each other in tangible ways that affect the classroom. That's one of the things that we really have to overcome. Just remediating the facilities isn't remediation in the classroom, mm -hmm. and that's what we really need to see. So as a parent, I may be watching this and fairly terrified at what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> what would you encourage them to do? Right. I mean, you know, one of the things that we saw that was super helpful in Gary and in Flint were, you know, mitigating the water coming into your house mm -hmm. with filters. I, my own house has numerous. Well, after doing this research, I was like, oh, you know, that's your kids. <laughs> I didn't know it was me. We are definitely going to filter our water. So figuring out where are the places that we see the lead seeping in, whether it's the air. I think historically you think of paint right. and, you know, making sure kids aren't eating the paint, but the reality is the water, the pipes going through, all of those things. And making sure if your child tests positive at their pediatrician that you follow up with your pediatrician about what do we do next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake, it's well established. There's a direct link between lead 
and, and intellectual development. And literacy, yes, yeah, specifically. So if we're concerned about absenteeism, we're concerned about literacy rates, we have to start having a conversation about health informing classroom practice in order to move the needle. Because if we keep doing the same thing we're doing now, we're going to get the same results. We're decades down the road and we're still having the same yes, conversation. Yes, like we know better, we should be doing better. Dr. Angeloff, thank you. It was great to talk to you this morning. Thanks for having Fascinating study, us. absolutely. And we'll continue to follow the progress of your group and, and yeah. this uh, topic in particular. Right on.